G'day and welcome to Steve's Tesla. I'm over here in Japan in Kyoto. Japan really is a country of contrasts. They've got new technologies and old traditions. There's things you see in Japan and some things you don't. One of those is litter, rubbish. There's absolutely no litter or rubbish anywhere. And yet, you never see a rubbish bin. People just seem to take their rubbish home with them. The other thing you don't see in Japan are electric vehicles. The cities seem to be full of hybrids, but you never see a battery electric vehicle. They just haven't taken off over here yet. At first glance, it just seems as if Japan is way down the S-shaped adoption curve that all new technologies go through, and it's just a late starter. But then, when you dig deeper, something more sinister becomes apparent. A damning new report has shown that nearly all major car companies are actively sabotaging the world's efforts to avoid catastrophic global warming. The report says Japanese automakers are the least prepared for the EV transition and have the most active strategic engagement against it. Toyota, with a performance band score of D, remains the lowest scoring company and is found to be driving opposition to climate rules in multiple regions, says the report. In regulatory comments submitted in 2023, Toyota advocated to weaken greenhouse gas emission standards in the USA and Australia. The main reason is simple, jobs. Japanese manufacturers buy parts from small family-owned businesses across Japan. Toyota has over 375,000 employees in Japan and is also responsible for tens of thousands of indirect jobs. There have actually been reports of automotive manufacturers handing out pamphlets to school children that espouse the vouchers of hybrid and hydrogen technology over battery electric vehicles. Can you imagine that? There is also quite an active YouTube hate culture in Japan for electric vehicles with the spread of the usual misinformation and denigration of battery electric vehicles not being up to the task. In most markets in the world, for example here in Australia, which has also been a late starter to the acceptance of electric vehicles, the reasons cited include the higher purchase price of battery electric vehicles, uncertainty by people considering making the change, lack of charging infrastructure, and the misinformation such as the potential for battery electric fires. Some people worry about depreciation values, and also some car dealerships are not being enthusiastic about promoting battery electric vehicles. Japan, however, meets all of the conditions that should make it a front-runner in electric vehicles. Above average incomes, a robust automotive industry, high rates of new car purchases, and a culture that generally embraces technology. Instead, battery electric car sales made up only 2.2% of new vehicle sales in Japan in 2023. It's not as if Japan can't make battery electric vehicles. In fact, they were an early adopter in 1949 after the Second World War with the Nissan Tama electric vehicle. Yes, 1949. The Nissan electric Tama was an early electric vehicle developed by the Toyota Electric Car Company, which later became part of Nissan. It was designed in the post-World War II era at a time when Japan faced a severe shortage of gasoline, making electric vehicles a practical alternative at the time and had a top speed of 35 kilometres an hour and could travel approximately 65 kilometres on a single charge. It featured a boxy utilitarian design typical of vehicles of that era and was primarily used for taxi services and despite its limited range and speed, the Tama demonstrated the feasibility of electric vehicles long before they became mainstream. Nissan today have battery electric vehicles available for sale in Japan, plus a futuristic lineup of concept cars. So what's going on? 
The manufacturing sector, including automotive, makes up 89% of Japan's GDP. In fact, Japan is the world's third largest automotive manufacturer. Nevertheless, unlike several other Asian countries, Japan has been slow to adopt zero emission vehicles. As the global shift to zero emission vehicles accelerates, the success or downfall of Japan's automotive sector will impact the country's economic stability. As a result, Japan's still emerging role in the evolving global market will have an impact on Japan's GDP. Japan's slow adoption of EVs also traces back to a bet made a decade ago to invest heavily in hydrogen fuel cell technology. While serving as CEO, Toyota refused to give EV development top priority, claiming that battery-powered vehicles were too complicated and unpopular with consumers. Some critics argue that Toyota has been slow to fully embrace battery electric vehicles and has instead focused heavily on hybrid and hydrogen fuel cell technologies. They claim this strategy could be seen as sabotaging the broader shift to battery electric vehicles. This focus on hybrids might slow the adoption of fully electric vehicles because hybrids still have fossil fuels. Secondly, Toyota has been a proponent of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. While these vehicles have potential, the infrastructure for hydrogen fueling is less developed than the charging network for battery electric vehicles, which could also delay the transition to fully electric vehicles. Finally, some believe that Toyota's marketing and lobbying efforts are actively designed to slow down the transition to battery electric vehicles and to water down and weaken moves to implement fuel efficiency standards. Toyota produces more than 10 million vehicles each year and yet lags behind Chinese startups, Xping, with their first vehicle produced in 2018, Neo, and Zika, who started in October of 2021. But digging deeper, you find that Japan's EV market is vastly different from the rest of the globe's. Japan's EV buyers chose hybrid electric vehicles nine out of ten times. Yeah. Great. Battery electric vehicles have captured just 6% of the new vehicle market in Japan. In a recent video, YouTuber The Electric Viking, Sam Evans, said the following. I want to beg you, don't support Toyota. Don't buy anything they make. Don't say anything positive about them. People need to know that Toyota is lobbying against EVs constantly, even to school children. I'm serious. There was a report showing they were actually giving... Um, pamphlets to school children to try to basically brainwash them into believing anti-EV crap. It's worth noting that Toyota has announced plans to expand its lineup of electric vehicles. The Toyota BZ4X is now available in Australia. This is what Toby Hagen had to say about the BZ4X on the Nightlife podcast recently. Um, so the BZ4X, which is the um, which is Toyota's first electric vehicle in Australia, and um, uh, it's it's okay. It's nothing special. It ha doesn't have the best range. The problem is, I talked about Tesla before with the Model Y. You end up bringing it back to that, and the Model Y is about fi now fifteen thousand dollars cheaper, and it's got a bigger body, better performance, um, more features, uh, more range. And it's got the, then the Tesla charging network to go with it. So once you look at it in that light, um, I guess the one thing you could say that Toyota's got that they don't have is the dealer back, the dealer backup, and the reputation for reliability and, and quality, which uh, are the standouts for it. So the BZ4X in the base car, um, most most two-wheel drive or a lot of two-wheel drive EVs, they make them rear-wheel drive. In that BZ4X, it's front-wheel drive. And the all-wheel drive one is obviously a dual-motor version. But the entry-level car is about $74,000, which is, I think, too expensive is the mm. short story. I think it needs to be um, a bit cheaper, particularly in light of everything that's gone on in that, uh, in that EV market in the last two or three months. But the pace and scale of this shift by Toyota is often seen as lagging behind competitors who have committed more aggressively to battery electric vehicles. So it's making for an interesting transition. Hey, thanks for watching. Please subscribe. G'day and welcome to Steve's Tesla. This is my channel dedicated to electric vehicles and renewable energy. Subscribe now and let's drive.